timer caps. They are darn useful. The timer cap on the left has got a brand new battery in it. You can see how uh, those numbers show up nicely. The one on the right has an older battery. It's starting to fade out. They last, I don't know, six, seven months. That one's starting to fade out on me. You can take these uh, caps apart if you have a set of jeweler screwdrivers. Or very small screwdrivers. They don't have to be jeweler. Just small, very small. And if they are very small, you can dig the guts out of the cap. There'll be a plastic dome covering a circuit. And you can dig that circuit right out of there. There it is, it's a tiny circuit board. And the battery cavity is right there. That notch was already in place. I did not dig it out. I did have to loosen the very tiny Phillips head screws so that the battery could come out of there. And the battery that was in place Don't know if you can read that. It says LR41 on the battery. It's a very, very small battery. The LR means that it's an alkaline battery. So let's go to the alkaline battery charger and see if we can recharge it. This is the LR41 button battery I'll be recharging. It's a very tiny little guy. The LR means that it's alkaline construction. So I'm going to use my specially designed alkaline battery charger. And I'll hook this little guy up in parallel with four other batteries. These are AAA batteries that all need charging. And I have jumper cables connected to the isolation diodes. So this battery will be connected in parallel with the AAAs. And I'm connecting the button battery to a neodymium magnet because neodymium is electrically conductive. So I have the positive side facing toward the magnet. I'm going to use a piece of paper with a hole punched in it as kind of a uh, protection against shorts. And I'm just going to carefully set that down. And he's all set to go. First, let's measure uh, that button cell. Let's see what kind of charge it's holding out to right now. Should be quite expended. Excuse me, my meter's acting up. About 0.6 volts. So that little battery is quite expended. So I'm going to go ahead and turn the circuit on. See if there's any problems. The circuit's running, little lights on the back there. LED just lit up. Let me take a look at this while it's running. So I'm already up to 1.5 volts as a charge on the battery. We'll have to wait till that actually soaks into the battery, of course. So I'm going to let that run for an hour and come back and see how the battery's doing. It's been one hour of charging. The charge has been off for a little while. Let me take a look at the uh, how the button battery is doing. 1.3 volts. Looks like I'll have to give another hour and we'll come back and check again. It's another day. Let's check that button cell battery. It's been a total of five hours charging and I had to pull the triple A's off their cradles, out of their cradles as they charged up enough, I had to take them off. Let's take a look at what the button cell is doing right now. 1.5. Nice and steady. So it took five hours to charge up four AAAs and the button cell. Oddly enough, the button cell didn't really get any appreciable charging. It wouldn't go over 1.3 until I got down to just one 
AAA battery. So it might have more resistance than the AAA batteries, I'm not sure. Let's take that button cell over to the cap and see if it works. So here's my circuit I took the battery out of. Button cell's all charged up. Stick it back in place. I'll screw it down later, but I want to see that it works first before I put it all back together. Yes, it does. Excuse me. Let me get this right. There you go. Got to hold it very firm. So, yeah, you can recharge little tiny button cell batteries as long as you have the alkaline battery charger circuit. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to put this guy back together because uh, I've got many more of these dead guys. And I'll be able to reuse them. Run out.